Welcome back. On the foreign scene, immigration officials in the United States have released at least 300 people who were arrested during a mass raid in Mississippi on Wednesday. Immigration and Customs Enforcement spokesman Brian Cox says they have been placed into proceedings before the Federal Immigration Courts and they will have their day in court at a later date. Those not released will be moved to an ICE detention facility and held there. Here's Simon Puse with more international news in around the world in five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. Kazakhstan's security forces have arrested the former president after a botched raid on his property overnight resulted in the death of one officer. In amateur footage, Almazbek Atambayev, who led Kazakhstan from 2011 to 2017, is seen shaking hands with someone outside his home, but moments later armed guards storm his residence. Shots ring out around the compound while the former president's supporters throw rocks at the soldiers outside the gated house. Mr. Atambayev reportedly surrendered and was being transported by convoy to the country's interior ministry. He had earlier refused to surrender, provoking a standoff in which his supporters took six officers captive. Parliament accused him of corruption and stripped him of immunity from prosecution in June after he fell out with the current president, Suronbai Jeanbekev. Mr. Atambayev says that charges are politically motivated. Switching to a plant-based diet can help fight climate change, UN experts have said. A major report on land use and climate change says the West's high consumption of meat and dairy produce is fueling global warming. But scientists and officials stop short of explicitly calling on everyone to become vegan or vegetarian. They said that more people could be fed using less land if individuals cut down on eating meat. The way we produce food and what we eat contributes to the loss of natural ecosystems and declining biodiversity. When land is degraded, it reduces the soil's ability to take up carbon, and this exacerbates climate change. Hong Kong police have appealed for order on the eve of a three-day protest scheduled at the city's international airport aimed at gathering support from foreigners and travellers. Police said they have yet to receive an application for a permit to hold a gathering at the airport from protesters. The United States has raised its travel warning for Hong Kong, urging increased caution by visitors to the Chinese territory in the face of what it described as civil unrest after months of somewhat violent protests. We are aware that recently several countries have issued travel warnings to Hong Kong, urging their citizens to exercise caution. Therefore, if any protester will stage protest at the airport, I hope they will be peaceful and law-abiding. They should not commit any disorderly acts that will affect both citizens and visitors. There's been mixed reaction after a female politician was removed from Kenya's parliament in an incident which has highlighted a global push for more child-friendly governments. Serena Chowdhury reports. Honorable Zuleka, you must get out of the house immediately. This was the moment Kenyan lawmaker Zuleka Hassan was removed from parliament for bringing her baby into the chamber. Footage broadcast live on parliamentary TV on Wednesday showed acting House Speaker Christopher Omulele calling for order as security members moved to escort her out. Hassan said she had had no choice but to bring her baby to Parliament. Today I had an emergency, so what was I supposed to do? Miss Parliament and miss my duties just because of her baby. So that's why I just came with her. I knew that I'd stay here for a while. And then later when my situation is better, I could. But if there was a room, a crash or a nursery here, I'd be able to then put my, my baby. The incident once again throws into the spotlight a global push to make parliaments friendlier for children and their parents. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, who gave birth last year, has been held up as a prime example, notably bringing her baby with her while speaking at the UN General Assembly. While some female MPs supported Hassan and walked out of parliament with her, on social media there's been mixed reaction from the Kenyan public over the incident, some calling her removal criminal, and others calling her actions unprofessional. An Atlas V rocket has launched, carrying a communications satellite for the U.S. military. We have liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket with AEHF-5 for the United States Air Force Space and Missile Systems Center. 
Liftoff was at 10.13 GMT from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. The whole system will ultimately consist of six satellites which are intended to provide global communications for strategic command and tactical warfighters for ground, air and sea. And finally, hundreds of people have gathered at the world-famous Abbey Road Zebra Crossing to mark the 50th anniversary of the day the Beatles were photographed on it. The picture of John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison and Ringo Starr striding over the pedestrian crossing on Abbey Road has become one of the best-known album covers in music history. Lookalikes reenacted the moment with hundreds of people watching on. The Zebra Crossing was granted protected status by the government in 2010. And that's your international news around the world in five. And the federal government plans to support the under-20 Women's World Cup bid. Ayotunde Balogun has more for us. Yes, indeed. And the federal government has restated its support of the bid to host the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup finals come 2020. A vice president of Nigeria, Professor Yamil Shibajo, has said this when a team from the World Football Governing Body, FIFA, and members of the bid committee paid him a courtesy call at the presidential villa. Professor Shibajo promised that the government will mobilize every apparatus to ensure successful hosting in the areas of infrastructure, security, and other logistics. Everton have completed the signing of Super Eagles forward Alex Iwobi from Arsenal for £35 million. The 23-year-old midfielder has signed a five-year deal at Goodison Park after a deal was agreed between the clubs on deadline day. Everton will pay £28 million up front for Iwobi with £7 million of additional fees to follow. Well, Arsenal have completed the signing of Brazilian defender David Luiz from rivals Chelsea in a deal worth £8 million. While well, the Gunners manager Unai Emery has been chasing the central defender all summer and have finally got one in the door with Louis moving from Stamford Bridge to North London at the Emirates. A 32-year-old who signed a two-year deal with the Gunners will wear the number 23 shirt. Romelu Lukaku has secured his Manchester United exit after joining Inter Milan in a £76.5 million deal and the Belgian striker has tripled his wages by penning a £300,000 a week contract at the San Siro. Inter confirmed his arrival on deadline day, finally bringing to an end boss Antonio Conte's summer-long pursuit of the hitman. In Liverpool forward Sadio Mane, Barcelona forward Lionel Messi and Juventus ace Cristiano Ronaldo have been nominated for the UEFA Champions League Forward of the Season Award. UEFA also announced their list of nominees for best goalkeeper, defender and midfielder from last season's tournament. The jury for the award was made up on the coaches of 32 clubs that competed on the group stage of last season's tournament, together with 55 journalists from each of UEFA's 55 member associations. And that's a wrap on Sports News. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun. Back to you, Anne. Thank you, Ayo. And the main news again. The police today pay tribute to three officers killed by soldiers during a covered operation in Taraba State. The Inspector General of Police said the slain officers were some of Nigeria's finest. President Mohamed Buhari has called for a thorough investigation into the killing of the police officers in Taraba State. The president gave the directive to service chiefs who met with him at the villa on security situation in the country. The Federal High Court today granted the request of the Department of State Services, DSS, to retain leader of Revolution Now Protest Group and publisher of Sahara Reporters, Omoyele Shore, for 45 days. And U.S. immigration officials have released 300 people arrested in massive raids in Mississippi. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night rest. I'm Anne Mwawadu.